On April 8, 2024, a total solar eclipse will cast its shadow across Mexico, the United States and Canada. It'll be a special event because I'll be there and I've never seen a total eclipse before, but that's not the only reason. This eclipse is special in other ways too. The first reason this eclipse is special is that it'll be especially dark. That's right, solar eclipses aren't all the same. They have different magnitudes that tell you how dark they are. The magnitude of an eclipse is is defined as the ratio of the apparent size of the moon over that of the sun, which depends on exactly what the moon is up to at the time it gets in between us and the sun. To have a total eclipse rather than a partial one, the magnitude must be one or higher. On this occasion, it'll be 1.057, which is the highest in the United States since June 1806, when a solar eclipse with a path very similar to the upcoming one had a magnitude of 1.060. The 2017 eclipse in North America had a magnitude of 1.031. The ratio hasn't always been that close to one and won't remain so forever. This is because the moon is slowly drifting away from Earth, which will make its apparent size smaller. In about half a billion years from now, the moon won't be able to cover up the sun entirely anymore, so no more total solar eclipses. And a billion years in the past, solar eclipses would have been even darker than they are today. Another reason this eclipse is special is that it'll happen at a solar maximum. You know, the sun has a cycle of variable activity that peaks approximately every 11 years. We're currently approaching the peak of activity of solar cycle 25. This means that during the partial phase of the eclipse, we'll likely see sunspots on the disk. A third reason this eclipse is special is that during totality there'll be a comet visible. Yes, a comet. It has the pretty cool name Devil's Comet, though it's technically known as Comet 12P Pons Brooks because astronomers want to have some Fun too. If you're observing with the naked eye, the comet is going to be just about visible, but it'll be very hard to spot. However, if you take pictures of the event, inspect them carefully afterwards, maybe you'll see it. The comet will be in between the Sun and Jupiter, much closer to Jupiter. And apart from Jupiter, Venus will also be visible closer to the horizon. Now let me mention a few things to watch out for during the eclipse. First, there's the pinhole effect that you can see during the partial phase. If the light of the sun falls through a tiny cracker hole, you'll see a round disk with part of it bitten off. If you look closely, you'll notice that it's inverted, so the shadow of the moon will be on the other side than it's up in the sky. This pinhole effect is of course not special to solar eclipses, but normally it's difficult to see because the sun is round. You can often see this pinhole effect happening between leaves on trees or with some everyday items like a kitchen colander. Second, watch out for Bailey's beads, aka the diamond ring. In the moment immediately before and after totality, you can see the last bits of sunlight that pass between the mountains on the moon and you, which causes tiny sparkles. These sparkles last less than a second, so if you want to take a picture, you might want to set your camera to burst mode. A third thing is one to listen for, that's the wind. Surprisingly, an eclipse causes both more winds and less winds. I know that sounds like a dark matter theory that fits any data, but it's not as crazy as it seems. If you're in a flat place, the wind should calm down. This is because the wind was probably caused by air rising due to it being warmed by the sun. No sun, no rising air, no wind. But if you're in a valley, you might feel a brief increase in wind speeds because the air on the mountains around you has cooled and is rolling down on you. This isn't just theory. Scientists measured it during an almost total eclipse in the UK in 2015. While the wind changes aren't big, they're real. They also recorded temperatures going down by 1 to 3 degrees Celsius. Fourth, the purking effect. This is a quirk of perception which seems to make blue and violet colors brighter and red and orange darker. It comes from the response of our eyes to the suddenly dark environment. The receptors for the blue 
blue-violet part of the spectrum adapt better. If you want to watch out for this, bring something colorful along. Fifth, shadows get weird. As the total eclipse approaches, shadows get increasingly sharp edges. Usually, shadows produced by the sun have a fuzzy outline. This is because the sun isn't a point-like source, but it takes up some area in the sky. But the more the sun is covered up by the moon, the smaller the area of light emission is and the sharper outlines become. Another thing you might notice about the shadows is that a minute or so before and after totality, they have thin wavy lines of alternating light and dark. This happens because when the sun is almost covered, the remaining light comes from this very narrow sliver at the edge. The rays of this light are then almost parallel and very sensitive to turbulence in the atmosphere. However, the effect usually has very low contrast and to see this you might want to put a white sheet of fabric or cardboard on the ground. And my sixth and final recommendation for what to watch out for is animals. Animals can have weird reactions to solar eclipses. That's everything from dogs to birds to crickets which get confused about the time of the day. It's not just anecdotal evidence. During the 2017 eclipse in the United States, a group of researchers went to a zoo in South Carolina and observed the animals. They found that while most of the species switched to nighttime behavior, some of them instead showed signs of anxiety. So clearly they understood that something weird was going on. This included several types of apes, but also giraffes or flamingos. So please, while you watch the solar eclipse, don't leave your giraffes alone. This video comes with a quiz that lets you check how much you remember. Knowledge is power, I really believe that. And there's no better place to grow your knowledge than brilliant.org. Whether you're into coding, math, science, or just want to level up your problem-solving skills, Brilliant's interactive courses make learning really fun and engaging. I've been digging their probability course recently, and that made me fully realize how much of this stuff I'd completely forgotten. Whether you want to know more about solar panels, neural networks, astrophysics, special relativity, or computational biology, Brilliant has you covered. And they're adding new courses each month. I like the place so much, I even have my own course there. That'll introduce you to the most important basics of quantum mechanics. That's interference, superpositions and entanglement, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And afterwards, maybe you want to continue their course on quantum computing or quantum objects. And of course, I have a special offer for viewers of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine, you'll get to try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for full 30 days and you'll get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Links in the description below, so go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.